Welcome back. We were just talking about insects. Insects are small bugs that have six legs. Let's keep reading. There's the frog. It was hiding. I can just barely see its eyes peering out of the water because its green skin blends in so well with the lily pads. Wow, the frog is camouflaged into the lily pads. I think it must have gotten too hot, so it jumped off its lily pad into the cool pond water. I'm feeling warm too, so I think I will get ready to go for a swim in the shallow pond water. I wonder what I will see when I dive down under the water. Wow, the long tail stems of the water lily stretch all the way down to the bottom of the pond. I bet its roots grow down into the muddy ground. The cattail stems grow underwater too. One of the turtles has slid off its warm rock and started swimming underwater in search of a snack. If you take a look at this picture, it's a cutaway illustration that parts are underwater there's the surface of the pond and the parts that are above the water. So you can see all parts of the pond in this picture. Take a look. There's plants and animals that are on the land. Then there's plants and animals that are on the surface or the top of the water. And then there's plants and animals that live under the water too. Let's keep reading to find out more about the, the animals and plants that live underwater. The water in the pond is so murky and muddy, I can hardly see. But I do see a fish swimming along, weaving between the stems of the lily pads. I can see the warm sunlight shining through the water surface into the pond's depths. I wonder what I will find crawling along the very bottom of the pond, where it's gloomy and dark. Murky means cloudy and dark and hard to see through. It's hard to see the plants and animals living underwater in this pond because the water is so murky. See how it's all brown and cloudy? Say that word with me. Murky. Murky. I guess crayfish like the cold, murky water at the bottom of the pond. I see one using its antenna to feel around for food that might be nearby. Then it will use its front claws to capture the food and put it into its mouth. I think I'm going to swim away before the crawfish antennas find me. Crayfish use their antenna to feel around because they can't see well in the murky pond water. That is a special way that crawfish can live in the pond habitat. If I follow the lily pad stems upwards, I can swim right back to the surface of the pond. The water gets warmer and warmer as I swim towards the sun. I can understand why the flowers of the lily pads grow on top. After all, it needs bright sunlight so its beautiful white flowers can grow and bloom. Plants have four basic needs. They need sunlight, water, air, and nutrients from the soil. Water lilies get nutrients from the soil at the bottom of the pond. That's why their stems reach all the way down to the bottom of the pond. Where do you think water lilies get water? from the pond. And how do they get sunlight and air? The flowers are above the surface of the pond. That swim in the cool pond water was refreshing, but now I'm worn out. It's time for me to say goodbye to the blue heron and the cattails, to the fish and to the lily pads. I'm going to find a warm rock nearby where I can lay in the sun, dry off, and take a nap. I think I'll take my time as I cross slowly around looking for the perfect spot. Goodbye, everyone.